Welcome back. I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage, and today I'm going to share with you my top nine human powered gardening tools. Number one, the shovel. All right, a shovel is a no brainer. Everybody knows about shovels. You can dig holes to plant fruit trees with it, you can dig a garden bed with it, you can shovel manure, and you can kill zombies. A shovel is the first one I would get. Number two, a spading fork. Now this isn't a manure fork or a pitchfork. This is one that has hard tines on it. Usually it's four hard tines and you dig it into the ground and you work the ground. If you're gonna double dig garden beds or turn over the ground and you're not using a tiller, a spading fork is what you would use. It's a way to dig in and loosen the ground with those tines and you put your foot on it, stick it into the ground, kind of work it in. Now the thing is with these is that a lot of the recent ones are pretty crummy. Even in sand, when I lived in Florida, before I was living in rocky clay, most of the digging forks just didn't cut anymore. You want a solid, heavy, forged fork. Martindale makes some, uh, Clarington Forge makes some, uh, but you gotta have a fork that can handle digging if you are going to get a fork. And I recommend you have one, it's nice to have a fork. Number three, the hoe. Now, I'm just talking about your regular, boring old garden hoe, the thing that is rusting in the corner of your dad's shed. That is a fantastic weeding tool. The problem is, most of us don't really know what to do with it. We go out there and we start hammering at the ground with it. And a lot of modern hoes are actually very poorly made. They don't hold a very nice edge. They come dull from the factory and we don't know that we're supposed to sharpen them and we don't adjust, there's that little gooseneck, we don't adjust the gooseneck so it's at a good angle to decapitate weeds when it hits the ground. I learned from Steve Solomon how to sharpen and bend a hoe to make it a good weeding tool and once I did that it made all the difference in the world. The other thing that made a great bit of difference was taking an old antique hoe back when the entire head of it is made out of one piece of steel. Using one of those old hoes, when you put an edge on it, you put a nice sharp edge on it, it's like a blade. It just zips through the ground. The head's not as heavy, but it's better steel. It's amazing. I don't know why they can't make a good hoe anymore, but uh, well, what are you gonna do? Go on eBay and get yourself a vintage hoe head and it will make all the difference in the world. Speaking of hoes, my next tool is the scuffle hoe, also known as the hula hoe. This is the oscillating hoe. It has a blade that rocks back and forth in the ground. If you have looser soil, this thing is a weeding machine. It cuts both ways. You just work it through the ground, zip, 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 back and forth, and it's, it's revolutionary. It will change your hoeing forever. It's a really good tool and the modern ones are just fine. Just go and pick one up from Ace or whatever you have local to you. A oscillating hoe, also known as a hula hoe, also known as a scuffle hoe. It has that little blade that rocks back and forth in the ground and so it cuts both ways, back and forth, just beneath the ground. And you just go along and you can hoe a path of those things like uh, you wouldn't believe. Fantastic tool. Number five is yet another hoe. That's a digging hoe, also known as a grub hoe. I have different varieties of this. I have a triangular shaped one, I have a long one, and then I have one that's called a grape hoe, but I use all of them like digging hoes. This is what you'll see me digging uh, pumpkin holes with, or digging yam beds, or digging root beds, because you're swinging this sucker and you're digging with it. And it's easier than taking a shovel and jamming that shovel into the ground and twisting it. I find it a lot easier to use this heavier hoe head. It's, I mean, it's a heavy piece. And you'll see them uh, on eBay all the time, these vintage hoe heads. They are fantastic for digging. They are popular all over the world, particularly the third world, but not so much inside the United States. I, I don't know why, but I got three different types of hoe heads like that from uh, Greg at easydigging.com. And I have been digging with those things for years, and they're just, they're fantastic. You can dig much easier than a shovel, and it's an easier motion, and the hoe head kind of works for you. It's not really a weeding hoe, it's a digging hoe. It's for hacking holes in the ground and tilling new earth. Number six, 
if you have a large garden, here is yet another hoe. This is a weird, weird hoe. It's called a wheel hoe. A hundred years ago, people were kind of moving away from mules and horses, and there were some hand, it was what's called the Planet Junior hoe. And this thing was just, it's, it's a hoe with a couple of handles on it and a bicycle wheel towards the front. I use Herrick Kimball's Planet Whizbang wheel hoe, which is a modern reinvention of the old Planet Junior wheel hoe. And it is about five times as fast for weeding. If you have a long row garden, you just walk the paths with it and sh 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 that thing cuts through the ground. It has an oscillating blade, like the hula hoe blade. It's about this wide, and you just walk with it both ways. And it rocks back and forth and decapitates all the weeds. And if you're doing, you know, five or 10,000 square feet of gardens and you've got them in rows, you walk down those rows and those paths are weeded. I mean, it's, it weeds almost as fast as you can walk. Fantastic tool for any kind of a survival gardening situation. Very easy, you can build one of your own. He's actually got the plans up if you look up the Planet Whizbang thing. If you're, if you're clever with putting stuff together, you can build one. You can also get uh, one from uh, Haas makes one. There's a couple of other varieties, but uh, you, can, you can buy them made now. They're kind of coming back into popularity as people are moving away from complicated tillers and gasoline and more towards uh, human-powered gardening. Fantastic tool for a larger space and one that we're probably not all that familiar with in general. Tool number eight, the wheelbarrow. My old wheelbarrow I found in a dumpster behind Kmart. I was dumpster diving and they threw out this wheelbarrow at Kmart because it had a flat tire. I put a new inner tube in it and I ran that thing until it fell apart. A wheelbarrow allows you to move amendments around. You can load it up with soil, you know, your potting soil, manure, whatever you're going to spread around the garden, that wheelbarrow helps you get stuff around and it allows you to move a lot more than you can by just hauling sacks or buckets or whatever else. Wheelbarrow is a really good tool. There's a reason that I tend to make my garden pads at least two to three foot wide and that's so I can move through easily. You get a wheelbarrow, you just roll right through. When I harvested pumpkins, there was my wheelbarrow. I loaded it up with pumpkins and rolled them in. And it's also fun for giving kids rides around the yard. A wheelbarrow is number eight. And number nine, my final tool, is one that uh, I discovered a few years ago and I would just simply not go without now. And that is a broad fork. A spading fork used to be what I did most of my loosening with. Shovel and a spading fork. I would do garden beds the double dug John Jeevens bio-intensive way. You know, you dig a trench and you loosen the bottom with a fork and then you pile the next row into the trench until you've dug this whole bed and it makes for a really nice, loose, rich, open space. But the broad fork breaks the ground to 14 inches. I use the Meadow Creature broad fork because it's the unbreakable one. There are other broad forks in the world and most of them have wooden handles or the tines are a little weaker. The metal creature, I can't break it. I have pried up boulders with it. I have snapped tree roots with it. You slam that sucker into the ground, you rock it back and forth and you break the ground. Once you have one, you will never go back. It is the most fantastic tool and every time I demonstrate and people try it, they're like, how come I don't have it? Well, the reason most people don't have it is it costs like 200 bucks but it's like a piece of tractor equipment. Once you buy it once, it's not gonna break, and it just goes and goes and goes. And I have done probably acres of ground with it at this point. One afternoon, a friend of mine and I did 10,000 square feet with a broad fork in about three to four hours. Much faster than forking, and when I used to have a tiller, I ended up letting my tiller just rot and moving over to the broad fork because it goes deeper, and I don't have to fix it, and I don't have to keep putting gasoline in it and uh, it's, it's one of those tools that, it's a kind of a modern innovation on an old concept, and I just simply would not go without it at this point. I, I'm not a big fan of new tools, and I'm not a fan of gimmicky tools. I've gotten sucked in by tools that looked like they were, you know, something awesome before. This one, as soon as I started using it, I realized this is something awesome. This is a tool that's worth adding to every tool arsenal and uh, I'm a big fan of the broad fork and I won't go without it. So there you go. There are your nine top human power tools that will get you through the apocalypse or at least through gardening without filling the air full of carbon monoxide and smoke. Thanks for joining me. I'm David the Good. 
for Burberry Vanity.